UTPA Athletics announces the 2015 Hall of Fame and Hall of Honor classes. We'll take a look at the inductees. UTPA Women's Basketball has a player from Iceland. We'll see how Hilder Bjork Karchin's daughter is adapting to life in the U.S. And UTPA Baseball wraps up the fall with the Green and White Steak Series. This is Bronx Country. Hey everyone and welcome to Broad Country, I'm Jonah Goldberg. In 2007, UTPA Athletics started a Hall of Fame and a Hall of Honor class to recognize those whose accomplishments made a deep and lasting impact both on and off the court, field, and track. The 2015 Hall of Fame and Hall of Honor induction ceremony is scheduled for the last day of February, so let's meet the inductees. It's a big class, including the 1962 through 66 men's tennis teams, former men's tennis players John Hunter, George Kahn, and Jerry Wardlebower, former baseball players Tommy Simpson and Tommy Sandoval, and former women's basketball player Don Beachler. Additionally, former Pan American Board of Regents President Orville Cox and Board of Regents member Anne Lamantia have earned induction into the Hall of Honor. The 1962 through 65 men's tennis teams all won NAIA national championships and big state conference championships capping off a streak of five straight national titles and 13 straight conference championships. The 1966 team finished sixth at the NCAA championships in the Bronx' first year at the NCAA Division I level. John Hunter had a big year in 1962-63, earning NAIA All-American honors after winning the 1963 NAIA Doubles National Championship with Lang. Hunter helped the Bronx win their third straight NAIA National Championship an 11th straight Big State Conference Championship. George Kahn won the 1965 NAIA Singles National Championship en route to earning NAIA First Team All-American status. He finished as a semifinalist in the 1966 NCAA Singles Championships and a quarterfinalist with Nietzsche in the NCAA Doubles Championships. Kahn helped the Bronx to the NAIA National Championships and Big State Conference Championships from 1963 to 65 as well as a sixth place finish at the 1966 NCAA Championships. Jerry Wardlebower teamed with Russell to win the 1961 NAIA Doubles National Championship while helping the Bronx to win their first NAIA National Championship and ninth straight Big State Conference Championship. Tommy Sandoval pitched for the Bronx from 1967 through 70 and ranks ninth in program history and career wins and innings pitched and 11th in strikeouts. He picked up the only road win in program history against Texas, 2-1 in 10 innings, in Game 2 of the 1968 NCAA District Championships. Sandoval went 4-4 four four with a 2.77 ERA that season, striking out 44 while allowing 40 hits and 21 walks in 52 innings. He followed that up by going 5-3 with a 1.27 ERA, striking out 68 while allowing just 48 hits and 28 walks in 64 innings in 1969. Tommy Simpson played for the Bronx from 1971 through 75, helping the team to the 1971 College World Series. He went two for two in the series. Simpson had six game-winning hits and a then-program record 13 doubles in 1974. He had 311 in 23 games in 1971 and 266 in 30 games in 72. Simpson missed the 1973 season due to severe burns suffered in the same accident in which UTPA Hall of Honor member Jody Ramsey was killed, but came back in 74 to hit 306 with 13 doubles, two triples, two homers, 21 RBI, and 22 runs scored. Simpson kept off his career by hitting 300 with five doubles, two triples, one homer, 19 RBI, and 22 runs scored in 1975. Dawn Beachler is the first women's basketball player to be inducted into the UTPA Hall of Fame. She was a first-team All-Sun Belt Conference selection and UTPA Female Student Athlete of the Year in 1993-94. She ranks third in program history and career field goals attempted, fourth in field goals made and free throw shooting percentage, fifth in field goal shooting percentage, sixth in points and three-pointers, eighth in rebounds and three-pointers attempted. She is among the top ten in multiple single-season categories, including points, rebounds, shots made and attempted, three-pointers made and attempted, free throws made and attempted, 
and minutes. Beachler is also among the top 10 in several single game record categories, including points, rebounds, overall shooting, three-point shooting, and free throw shooting. Orville Cox is known as the father of tennis at UCPA for his almost single-handed procurement of the construction of the then $75,000 tennis facility with a cost to Pan American College of only $3,000. The tennis courts opened in 1958 are named after Cox, who offered many scholarships to tennis players attending Pan American. Anne Lamantia served on the Pan American Board of Regents from 1979 through 82. The Anne Lamantia Outstanding Woman Athlete Scholarship was established in her memory by her husband Joe after her passing in 1983. It was one of the first scholarships for women at Pan American and goes to the female student athlete with the highest GPA every year. A bit of a tennis theme to this year's Hall of Fame and Hall of Honor. And sticking on the court, we take a look at UTPA women's tennis, which added Dominique Esparza Fuster, Natasha Mink, and Maria Trujillo Hoyos for the spring semester. I think, you know, bringing in the three of them, they have different games, and so it's going to add a lot to us. Probably, you know, going to add more to our doubles game, so it's going to strengthen our lineup for sure. Fuster comes to the Bronx from Veracruz, Mexico, where she finished runner-up for the 2012 National Youth Tennis Championship. She was ranked as high as the top 10 in Mexico while compiling 35 singles and 26 doubles victories. Dominique is going to be coming in with, you know, an all-court game. She's trained really hard. She's tried to keep me updated, and I know that she's been working on improving, you know, her baseline and her doubles, and she really just wants to be ready for college tennis. Mink comes to the Bronx from nogent sur mont france where she was a finalist at the Paris Championship in 2012. She then returned in 2013 and was a semifinalist. Mink also participated in the National Tennis Championship at Roland Garros in 2011 and 12. Mink has won many junior tennis championships since 2009 while competing all over France. I'm really excited to have Natasha. She comes in with good consistency, a um, big love for the game, so I'm excited to have her and, and bring her into our team. Hoyos comes to the Bronx from Popeye in Colombia, where she reached as high as number four in singles and doubles in the under-18 Colombian national rankings. In 2013, Hoyos won the Under-18 Doubles Championship while finishing as a singles semifinalist at the G1 National Tournament. She was also a singles semifinalist at the G3 National Tournament. Maria, you know, she's a grinder. She's put a lot on clay, and so she has good topspin. She's probably a stronger game from the baseline, but I know that she's willing to add to her game and um, also add doubles into her game as well. Think it's tough moving away from home for college? Imagine changing countries, too. Coming up on Brown Country, we learn about the transition for Iceland native Hildur Bjork Karchin's daughter. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Hildur Bjorg Karchin's daughter moved over 4,100 miles from her home in Iceland to come play for the UTPA women's basketball team. Moving from one country to another can not only bring a lot of challenges, but solutions as well. Joseph Teo has the story. The Bronx are off to one of their best starts with some help from their Icelandic addition, freshman Hildur Bjorg. Coach Larry Tidwell talks about recruiting the 6-2-4. Went up there last March and saw her and liked her and offered her and we got it done and she's now a UTPA Bronx. Being such a long way from home can take some adjustments, but Hildur is adapting well. Where I come from, the most is, I think it's the weather is the biggest difference. 
but yes, it's also like a small community. For Hilder, the biggest transition wasn't the weather. Rather, it was the physicality of the game. She's adjusting to the physical style of play in the States, and uh, she's going to add in a lot, of different, a lot of different areas. And before she leaves here, she'll probably be one of the best players ever to wear the uh, green, white, and orange of the UTPA. And her teammates are lending a helping hand with Hilder's game. They, they play completely different, so coming here, we're like a little more physical, like we bump into each other a little harder, so she's kind of like wasn't expecting it, but now I think like me helping her talk to her, like give her tips and just letting her know, forewarning her, like stuff like that. For Bronx Country, I'm Joseph Theo. Karchin's daughter in the Bronx visiting Texas Tech, and this game was tight throughout. And it starts with, guess who? Garchin's daughter. Three to nothing Bronx. The Bronx got strong play from the forwards in this one. Case in point, Brittany Bush. Five to nothing Bronx. Now the Bronx are down 8-7 when Chazé shows off the right stuff. Bronx by two. Now it's tied when Troy Swain unloads. 13-10 Bronx. Just over a minute left in the half. Bronx down two. Not anymore. Laura Van Tilber connects. Game tied at 18 going into the locker room. Start of the second half. It's Bush, then Karchin's daughter. It's a 6-0 run. Bronx up 22-18. After a 9-1 run by Tech, the Bronx are down four, but Karchin's daughter having none of that. Then it's Van Tilburg again. Game tied at 27. The Raid Raiders took their largest lead at eight at 40-32, but Swain, not a fan. It's the three, and then the layup. Bronx pull within three, but the Red Raiders go six for six from the line down the stretch to beat the Bronx, 50-42. Swain led the Bronx with a career high 10 points on four of eight shooting. Karchin's daughter next with seven points. Not seen on this list is DeAndrea Nolan, who had a strong game with eight rebounds, four assists, and three steals. Out of the 12 games we played, we played 11 extremely hard, and Tech was a very good game. We played extremely well defensively, but uh, just couldn't get it done from the field as we shot below 30% and had our chances, and we missed layups and, and easy shots, and it's just something you can't explain. I don't know why the ball doesn't go in on a more regular basis. Here's a look at the WAC non-conference standings. The Bronx and Bakersfield belong six-win teams, currently sitting at the top. The Bronx return home on Thursday at 7 against Incarnate Word at the UTPA Fieldhouse before visiting Virginia Commonwealth on Sunday to close out 2014. Thursday, Incarnate Word comes down and uh, they have a very nice team and they're going to be hard to beat and we're going to have to play at a high level to beat them and then we go on the road to Incar uh, Virginia Commonwealth and they're having another great season. They were in postseason last year, so we got our hands full for the break, and we hope we can go out with a winning record, you know, going into the Christmas break. As for the men, just one home game in December, taking on Lamar, and early on, it was the Janari Josar show. Makes it three to nothing, Bronx. A little later, Josar gets the pass down low and then realizes, hey, I think I'm alone now. There doesn't seem to be anyone around. It's five to four Bronx. Next time down the court, Josar hits the jumper. And then operator, I'd like to make a long distance call. Josar's from Estonia, so he knows a little something about long distance rates. He scored the Bronx first 10 points, makes it 10 to four. It wasn't all about Josar though. Shaq Boga had a big game too. The Bronx are up six, They'll go up 20 to 10. Lamar responds with a 12 run run to take the lead. So Josar takes back over. Draws the contact en route to a pair of free throws. Then a steal by Boga leads to this. Good and the foul. Josar hits the free throw. Bronx up 26 22. Time winding down before the half. And Boga finds Everett Osborne. Bronx up seven at the intermission. Second half, the Bronx lead is two, but another steal for Boga, and this time it's Elijah Watson on the finish. And then we're back to Josar. The three is nice, but how about the dunk? The rim's still rocking from that one. 
You know who else likes to dunk? Shaq Hines. The Bronx went up as many as 13. Three and a half minutes to go. The Bronx lead is just one. And that's when Boga throws down the dagger. Bronx win, 66-60. Strong games for a number of players. Career high 29 points for Joe Sar, a nine of 14 shooting, and route to his second WAC Player of the Week award. Joe Sar now averaging 19.8 points per game. That's 24th best in the country. Season high 19 points for Boga. How about Watson? Career high six assists to go with just one turnover. Career high five rebounds and he hit both of his shot attempts. Dan Camasa with his third straight game of at least nine rebounds, finishing with 10. The Bronx are now 3-0 at home this season. We started off good, um, and then we just missed a lot of shots, uh, take bad shots, uh, went kind of crazy with the ball. But uh, I think we, uh, our team has picked each other up, each other's up, and uh, that's how, I think that's how we got the W. Here's a look at the WAC non-conference standings. The Bronx off to a 5-4 start for the first time in seven years. That's also the best record in the WAC right now. The Bronx are on the road for the next five, starting with games at St. Louis, Creighton, and Nebraska-Omaha this week. That St. Louis game is going to be special for Shaq Boga. That's where he grew up. I can't wait, man. It's gonna, hopefully we get the win, man. But I just hope I'll be under control and don't get too excited. Just be calm and collective and uh, play solid and get a win. Tonight, you know, I was wired up. I admit, I mean, it's a big game for us to try to claw back after five in a row and then one home, and then we go five in a row and, a row, and then we come back with three in a row at home. So, you know, to get this game and, and uh, build some confidence at home and, and then, you know, go out and see what we can do out here against these teams. Fall baseball practice is about getting better, but sometimes you got to have a little fun. Next on Brown Country, we take you to the Green and White Stakes Series. The UTPA baseball team worked hard throughout the fall to improve, with an eye on the season opener in February. There were a number of intra squads, but some competitions had a little more on the line than others. Romeo Villarreal has the story. Each year, the UTPA baseball team has an inter squad challenge in which the team is divided up into two separate teams, which compete in an obstacle course, an inter squad series, and in their GPAs for the right to have the losing team serve them a steak dinner. It played out well, Romeo. Um, would have uh, rather gone to uh, after Christmas uh, with the GPA. But uh, the white one, the green opened up with a, they won the first game of the green and white World Series. And then white came back and won the second game and the third game. So they got, they had received the first point of the stake series. The second event was the obstacle course. Not wanting to let it come down to GPAs, the white team took this event, giving them the win in the stake series. It was difficult, you know, you got the stairs, which after the stairs, you're, you're wore out. And then you got the hurdles over there. And then the sit-ups, the sit-ups and the, and the jump rope isn't too bad. Um, the medicine ball throws, are, they're pretty tough because you got to get to the second level. And then the squats, that's probably where your legs are just done. You know, you got to squat 10 times. And then um, the tire flips, which was new this year. Last year, we just had to roll them. And the tire flips, you know, that, that, that was tough. And then not to mention the tube. Oh, my God, it was, it was tough. While the green team learned pretty early on in the obstacle course that they would not be able to win the stake series, that didn't stop them from battling till the very end of the obstacle course. A bunch of grinders. Uh, as you see, like, we, we, we lost, um, we still had one runner going, and uh, although we had lost the whole competition, he kept on going, and uh, that shows a lot. Along with allowing the players to have some fun during the fall, the stake series is a great opportunity for Coach Mantrana to learn about his team. But you want to go into the green and white series uh, just to see how much of the the information, the coaching, the system have they internalized. Um, and they've did a very good job of that, both offensively and defensively and also on the bases. So it's always good for the green and white series so we can see how much of what we've coached them up during the fall they were able to retain and implement. Um, and obviously uh, the obstacle course is good because it shows us uh, the guys that are really mentally tough um, and the guys that can get it done. So, you know, you combine those things, you have the, uh, the physical side, which is uh, the skills that you need to play the game, but you also have the mental toughness when you're tired um, to grind it uh, and keep working. So at the end of the, uh, the fall semester, those two things combined tell us about, about our team, uh, a lot about our team, 
um, both physically and mentally. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villadiel. The baseball team opens its season in mid-February, and we now know when men's tennis will be back on the court. Just over a month away, as the Bronx open up the dual meet schedule on January 21st against UMBC. It's the first of 24 matches leading up to the WAC championships in Kansas City. It's also the first of eight home matches for the Bronx, who also host Monterey Tech, Incarnate Word, and UTSA in non-conference action. One of the big highlights is March 27th through the 29th, when the Bronx hosts the first WAC roundup, as every team from the conference converges on the Orville Cox Tennis Center for two to three matches. The Bronx will face Grand Canyon, New Mexico State, and Kansas City, before facing Chicago State and Seattle at the second WAC roundup in Chicago two weeks later. The Bronx face some tough road matches, including traditional powers like Rice, Texas A&M, and Texas A&M Corpus Christi, and have a tough spring break trip that includes matches against Oklahoma State and Texas. Saturday was a special day for UTPA athletics, as seven student athletes graduated. The list includes six undergrads and one grad, as men's tennis student athlete Ricardo Hopker earned a Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Additionally, Matt Daniels, Alberto Morales, and Dylan Engelhardt of baseball, Samantha Paro of women's golf, Ramon Naley of track and field, and Maria Klefok of volleyball all completed their bachelor's degrees. From all of us here at Bronx Country, a big congratulations and best of luck in everything you do in life. Those seven student athletes prepared for excellence in life during their time at UTPA. Do you want to help our current student athletes prepare as well? Then join the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the proceeds go directly to student athlete scholarships. So visit BronxAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Well, it's winter break at UTPA now, meaning that we have four weeks until our next episode. Plenty coming up for the Bronx during that span, though. The men's basketball team opens up a five-game road trip at St. Louis before visiting Creighton and Nebraska Omaha. Then, after a week off, the Bronx visit Duquesne and Kent State before coming home to face Our Lady of the Lake, Chicago State, and UTSA at the UTPA Fieldhouse January 7th through the 12th. UTPA women's basketball with a lighter schedule, hosting Incarnate Word Thursday at 7 and visiting VCU on Sunday before taking two and a half weeks off before a visit to NJIT and Chicago State. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx Country this week. Schedule another visit for four weeks from today. But until then, Go Bronx! They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas.
We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference.